You know, about two years ago, me and three friends saw four comics. I gave the big guy a high five. He was the funniest, and he's coming up when we come back. His name is Steve Coombs. Being from Newfoundland, I come from a very musical family. But I'm not. So that's why I gotta get by my sense of humor and good looks. It's, uh, it's great to be back. Uh, I, love, I love traveling across the island. I just got back from doing a bunch of shows across the island. And you get like 10 minutes outside of Goobies and there's 85 grand dams on the side of the road selling baked apples. There's always one poor soul selling back apples. <laughs> Stay away from the back apples, people. You'll be wiping your ass with a quilt on the side of the highway. <laughs> and then you go up by Clarenville, you got like all the beautiful artwork on the rocks, like Dick loves Janet forever. Which could have been worse, Janet could have put her name first. <laughs> We're an awfully talented culture. Like, we've got all kinds of musicians and artists and actors and filmmakers and, and uh, novelists and, like, uh, mining disasters and shipwrecks and, and uh, sailing stories and ghost stories. But we don't have a really good Newfoundland romance novel. <laughs> so I thought I'd try my hand at it. Do you want to hear an excerpt of us? Yeah. <laughs> Or, uh, Fifty Shades of Bay. <laughs> Donna had just gotten home from the plant. <laughs> Ambrose Vickers had just tied up from crabbing and his load was low. <laughs> but a 12-hour shift counting his catch would take care of that. <laughs> Reeking of roe and brine, Donna was good enough ready for a nice long <laughs> soak. So she filled a tub with hot water and Chantilly suds and took a good long haul off her cigarette. <laughs> Slipping into the tub, she nestled the ashtray on the plush lime green toilet seat cover. <laughs> Next to a pack of freshly rolled rotmans. And taking her tea into her hands with her narrowed knuckles, she pursed her cracked lips and took a slight sip. <laughs> all the while exhaling through her nostrils. <laughs> no crabs in this tub. <laughs> and then there it was, a creak on the floorboards and the sound of stocking feet shuffling across the hardwood signaled that Bernard was approaching. The air was close and steamy, and the stale, sultry smell of smoke mixed with suds hung in the air. It was like an evening in Paris. <laughs> and sure enough, to lure any man into the bathroom. And Bernard was no less any other man. Here he comes, she thought, as she lay in the tub, slowly sipping her tea and surmising the Sudoku puzzle, trying to figure out who put the Jesus tent in the top left most corner. <laughs> Cursed Bernard, she thought to herself. After 40 years of marriage, she knew exactly what he wanted. She knew what he wanted, but she wanted to hear herself, hear him utter the muffled words she knew was coming. Sinking her ears just below the waterline, she waited, knees spread asunder, <laughs> apart. <laughs> Cresting the suds as they broke and crackled against her skin and popped betwixt her inner thighs. <laughs> wait for it, she thought, just wait. His footsteps now having left the hardwood, Bernard slid his way along the linoleum until he arrived at the <laughs> mismatched turquoise bath mat. 
and hovering above the tub, he stood peering through a veil of knee highs, hung lifeless and limp and the curtain rack. <laughs> and in one swift motion that directly contradicted years of back-breaking labor, unfurled his navy blue lawn johns until he lay coiled about his ankles on the bathroom floor. <laughs> his half-naked torso now revealing his intentions. All under the watchful eye of a vintage Barbie doll. Perfectly poised above a double roll of cotton L. Raising the seat, burner swiftly sunk back with a thud and released a thunderous clap all the while grunting, Friggin' cabbage! <laughs> Bernard laughed maniacally as he winked from high upon his throne. His laughter, however, quickly abated as Donna uttered the words he feared were forthcoming. We're out of toilet paper! <laughs> you touch his head, Jesus, Barbie, to be the last woman you ever undresses. <laughs>